you have continually had exposure to what I think the word is, is, is creators. Mm -hmm. What is the one common trait you think that all creators share? Filmmakers, entrepreneurs, philanthropists? What's the one common trait they all share? Well, the one common trait is you cannot be creative without passion. Just, it's not possible. But what I have found is that the most creative people, let's take passion as a given, take concepts or domains that have nothing to do with each other and somehow figure out how to put them together. What people, I think, traditionally say, connecting the dots. And we all think of, oh yeah, I just I have all these dots, now I need to connect them. But is there a way that you can do that in an interesting manner that will engage people? Say, gee, I never thought about that. So the experience is of saying, I don't know how many times a day anybody says, oh my God, uh, I'm not particularly religious, I'm very spiritual. My best friend is an eighth generation rabbi, um, but I'm not particularly religious in the traditional sense. Um, I think this notion of taking non-adjacent concepts, nothing to do with one another, and putting them together. So there's an, an interesting example. There's a phenomenon going on now. Maybe you've heard about it or even had the, the, the chance to have one. It's called the cronut. Yeah, I've had a cronut. You've had a cronut. Yeah. Now, once you see the cronut, say, oh, that was obvious. Half croissant, half, half donut. donut. So most people don't think of having a donut and a croissant in the same, you know, one is in a silo. Each one is in a silo. And so when I see that in about two seconds, I say, I've got to meet the chef. Now, he is going to be one of our recipients this year. And we're negotiating with him because he is so passionate about uh, the people who love cronuts. And it has to be democratized. We have our awards. I was hoping we could get, you know, 100 cronuts and let people share. We're negotiating whether we can get one or two cronuts. You're talking about the Tribeca Institute's Disruptive Innovation Awards. I don't yeah. want to come back to that. Okay. I, it's interesting, you know, you talk about passion. I'll tell you a quick story of mine, even though I'm the interviewer here. But, um, you know, I've started two separate businesses, Craig, from an entrepreneurial side. Um, one very successful, one not so successful. And what's interesting is, and I didn't really have a chance to look inward and learn this until I failed, until I met the business that wasn't successful, that it was passion that is the essential ingredient. In other words, while you're making money, right, and the dollars are coming in, there's never that introspective moment that you ask yourself, do I care about what I'm spending my hours on each day? But the minute there's nothing to protect you between how you spent your time, you know, and that question, the minute there's not money and they're all, there, there is only, uh, did you care? Were you yeah. passionate about what you That's did? The passion. It makes you very much question what you're going to do next, yeah. right? Time ultimately becomes the most essential resource any of us have. It might not seem like that uh, at any point in the day, day uh, but I think two characteristics, different than the passion and the creativity, is the willingness to take risk, and with that comes the willingness to fail. And I look at failure as an essential part of any creative process, because if there's no risk, it's not going to be that interesting. So I think almost everything I've done, you know, start writing children's books. I've never written a children's book before. Um, if, as they say, if I had known then what I know now, would I have done it? Maybe not. But that was the beauty of it is it worked.